Module 5, Single Lane Design, and we're going to talk about the size, position, and alignment of approaches with this module. Design of roundabouts involves optimizing three design decisions to balance the design principles and objectives. And they include the roundabout size, its position, and the alignment of the approach legs. There are numerous possible combinations of each, and the optimum combination will often be based upon the constraints of the project site, balanced with the ability to control speeds, accommodate the design vehicle, and meet other objectives. So if we talk about size, we'll start with the inscribed circle diameter, or ICD. On single lane roundabouts, the size is, is largely going to be dependent upon the turning requirements of the design vehicle in addition to being able to control the, the entry speeds, our fastest path. But for the most part, uh, the larger the design vehicle, the larger circle you're going to need. And in multi-lane roundabouts, of course, we still have to accommodate the design vehicle, but uh, controlling entry speeds is going to be a little bit harder. And then we also have to provide adequate alignment of the natural vehicle paths. In other words, we're going to have to make sure that we don't have path overlap as well. For the initial selection of our, our ICD, the design vehicle and context of location should be taken into consideration. If we're in a urban location, typically lower speeds and, and many times we have uh, more right away constraints at those locations. And you know, you would think in an urban area, not as large of a design vehicle as well. But you get out in the rural locations where we have higher speeds uh, and many times larger design vehicles out there. So when we take a look at uh, our chart here, typically single lane roundabouts, you know, will be in that 120 to 160 foot size with the typical ICD. And the Florida Department of Transportation recommends starting at 140 when possible. Uh, it seems to be a nice size to accommodate uh, the WB62FL. Then when you get into multi-laned or two-lane entries, your circle size typically is in the 160 to 200 foot range. And again, 180 being a nice, nice starting point for a multi-lane roundabout. Alignment of approaches. Alignment of approach legs play an important role in the design of a roundabout because they affect the amount of deflection or speed control that can be achieved. It provides the ability to accommodate the design vehicle and visibility to adjacent legs. Now the optimal alignment is generally governed by the size and position of the roundabout relative to its approaches. We'll cover three different alternatives for uh, alignment of approaches to roundabouts. The top one here, alternative number one, is an offset left. So you can see the approach center line is to the left of the center of the roundabout. Alternative number two has the approach uh, running through the center of the roundabout. And alternative number three has the approach center line to the right of center. Now the optimal alignment allows for an entry design that provides adequate deflection and speed control, appropriate view angles, and balances property impacts and costs. In addition, uh, alignment, as I had mentioned previously, does have an impact on accom accommodating the design vehicle as well. In general, uh, you're going to find that right of center is very challenging to to accommodate or to accommodate the slower design speed that's required. Uh, so many times that will not be allowed through the center of the roundabout. Some locations uh, that may work, but in general, uh, left of center alignments are what we're going to be looking for for roundabouts designed uh, in Florida. There are many benefits of the offset left alignment, and that includes the desired deflection is easier to achieve, especially with the smaller circle diameter. So we're going to slow down our entry speeds. It'll be easier to do that, and we're also going to be easier to accommodate the design vehicle. Entry path overlap is easier to remove from multi-lane approaches, and the tangential exits reduce the possibility of exit path overlap. Shown here is a centered alignment type of design. The roundabout is placed in the, right in the center of the intersection and, and really the approaches and exits are just brought in and kind of some radiuses thrown in there. Very um, kind of standard 
I would almost say kind of a cookie cutter type of a design here, but you can see that really there's no no speed control or deflection that is brought in on those entries. So you, you'd be able to get into the circle pretty quickly. And maybe this is fine, you know, low speed residential type of an area. But what we're looking for on the state highway system, we'd want to have a little more speed control on those those type of approaches. And that's where the, the left of center type of design comes in. And that's what's shown on, on this slide here is you, you basically take that roundabout and you twist it clockwise a little bit, which gives us some, some better control on our speeds for our entries. And it makes the exits a little bit uh, more tangential out there. So this, this is a, a nice approach to, to get that speed control. And that's with the offset left type of design. This slide shows uh, a couple of examples, pictures this time of, of the different alignment approaches. The one on the left is centered, if not a little bit to the right. And you can see that the you can get into the circle fairly quickly or easily there. So you get some faster entry speeds and there's a little more curvature on the exits. The picture on the right has the offset left type of design. So better control of entry speeds and with that twisting uh, gets a little bit uh, straighter out type of exits. So alignment of approaches and entries. So our, our approach curves should be gentle, become successively smaller and should be sized based on the design speed and expected speed change. We would look to have tangents that should be provided between the reverse curves. And we're looking for a 25 minimum on low speed approaches for that those tangents. And super elevation of curves on approach is counterproductive to the objective of transitional speed reduction. So you would not be looking to provide any super elevation. Our goal here is to slow people down, not make it easier for them to, to come into the roundabout at a higher speed. So at many locations, we will not be doing super elevation. And here again, this example shows our offset left type of design. Let's take a look at a couple examples here and which entry design has better composition or do we think is gonna have better operation. The one on the left has um, a pretty large chicane to it. So definitely gonna be controlling our entry speeds on that. But uh, we would argue that the one on the right has similar speed control with less curvature. And our point here to note is that you can overdo it and that too much entry path curvature can lead to reduced safety and the potential for single motor vehicle type of crashes if we put too much curvature or maybe use too sharp of radiuses on an approach. This picture uh, is from the, the roundabout that was shown on the previous slide on the left side. And you can see that there's also some, some issues with the landscaping here, which is blocking sight of, of the approach. We are gonna wanna be able to see that yield yield sign or that yield line at all times. Let's talk about high speed approaches. The primary safety concern in high speed context is clarity of the driving situation. That is to make drivers aware of the roundabout with ample distance to comfortably decelerate to the appropriate speed. So one of the biggest things here is gonna be visibility. We wanna provide the desirable stopping site distance of that entry point based on the approach operating speed. And the geometric alignment of approach roadway should be constructed to maximize the visibility of the center island. So we really wanna be able to see that center island from, from a distance away from the roundabout. And increasing the size of the ICD along with lighting and landscaping can further increase the available visibility of that central island. Pavement markings, signing, lighting, and curbs alert the driver approaching a roundabout of the changing conditions and that a speed reduction is expected. Uh, shown below here is an example of a, a roundabout on a, actually the terminus of a freeway coming in uh, from the right here at, at 70 miles an hour with a four lane divided type uh, typical section. So a curvature to the left and then a curvature to the right. You can see at this location is where the overhead signing occurs. Curb and gutter and a narrow or median is introduced. Um, shoulders start to decrease in this particular area. 
an additional overhead siding. Lighting is in this entire area. Then we've got some curvature to the left and then curvature to the right as we go into the roundabout. So there's a lot of different features that are added to this design to alert the driver to that something is changing. We've gone from this rural large median to a curb and gutter median. Now we're taking away the shoulder as well. So all these are stepping stepping down as you approach the roundabout to get that driver to, to slow down. Uh, so if visibility is an issue or if you know the roundabout is constructed and there there's some things going on, you know, vehicles aren't slowing down as they should, uh, you could look at doing some additional signing, maybe some additional marking, putting out some advanced warning beacons could be used, and even raised rumble strips or stripes could be could be implemented if if you're having an issue with speed reduction on, on high speed approaches. But hopefully your geometric elements are gonna gonna help uh, get those vehicles to slow down in advance prior to the roundabout. So we want slow, slow entry speeds. Uh, we can do that on higher speed approaches um, fairly easily. A lot of times we're gonna have uh, a little more right away there that we can use a larger ICD. We'll look to ex extend the splitter islands a little bit further. We wanna get that out uh, to alert, alert the driver that uh, they need to, intersection is coming up and they need to reduce their speed. That approach alignment, that offset left that we talked about is another way to help slow those entry speeds. And curbing, you know, we're gonna alert the driver the change in the roadway character. Again, that there's an intersection here and that they need to slow down. Curbing, uh, changing the roadway's cross section can be an effective means to help approaching drivers recognize the need to reduce their speed. Narrowing the shoulders and providing curbs give drivers a sense they are entering a controlled setting, causing them to naturally slow down. So here's an example of an approach. Here's the beginning of a longer splitter island. We've got a sign and an offset nose here, and that um, shows the driver that they're, again, approaching a roundabout. We've got lighting out here in advance as well, but you can see there's still still the rural shoulder here at this particular location. As we get closer, curb is starting to get introduced on the right side and is tapering tapering down as it approaches the roundabout. And right at the roundabout, you can see there's a narrower narrower section here again, uh, providing that kind of that pinching feeling to to hopefully naturally slow down those vehicles as they are getting closer to the roundabout. So good design encourages drivers to slow down before reaching the roundabout, and that's gonna be achieved through a combination of geometric design treatments that we just talked about. We wanna avoid forcing all the reduction in speed to be completed through the entry radius at the roundabout, so we want things happening in advance. We wanna use successively smaller curves on the approaches, and again, typically no super elevation. Shown here is an example of, uh, you know, a well-designed entry approach. And you can see that there is the offset left uh, design here, but we've got a curve that takes the driver to the right. There's a tangent in between, then there's a curve to the left, another tangent, and then again, that curve into the right, the controlling radius into, into the roundabout. The question for you here, what we had just talked about in our goal to slow down drivers prior to the roundabout and not have it all occur at the, the roundabout entrance. So is there speed reduction prior to the roundabout? And I would say that there is not, that this is just a very straight in roundabout design or entry design and all of the speed control is gonna be right, right in this area. So we're gonna to wanna to try and get the driver to slow down prior to that. How about this one? This one, you know, I'd argue is is overdone, that there's, you know, maybe excess curvature. This first radius here is pretty harsh. A lot of deflection, large uh, splitter islands, ex extra width through there. Definitely gonna get vehicles to slow down, but um, is it needed? Do you need that much curvature? So when we take a look at the different uh, alignment of approaches here, we'd see that this one probably has too little this one probably has a little too much going on, 
and the one in the middle here again is is just about right just enough to alert the driver have some curvature and get them to slow down the florida department of transportation policy for high speed approaches really follows everything that we've covered uh, to this point and that's they want vehicles to slow down before reaching the roundabout that the design speed is going to transition over the length of the approach or encourage the offset left approach design. Looking at a 200 foot minimum splitter island. Again, this is for high speed approaches. Use a slight chicane where appropriate and don't overdo it. Do not use super elevation. Use successively smaller curves as you're approaching the roundabout. We're gonna use tangents between those curves. We're gonna use minimum radiuses for the anticipated design speed. And again, that design speed is gonna change as you get closer to the roundabout. And that curve lengths do not need to meet that 400 foot uh, standard that is in a different, different sections of the FDM. Let's take a look at the exhibit 213-2 here, which is roundabout high speed approaches in the in the FDM and it's a really good example of um, a design example and some guidance to to follow as you're moving forward with your design and this one is for single lane roundabouts some of these uh, elements can be incorporated into multi-lane uh, design as well so we'll take a look first here and we had talked about the transition from a high speed roadway into a transitional roadway into the low speed roadway so that does occur as you approach approach a roundabout and as mentioned previously that there will be no super elevation that's just that normal crown type of of roadway all the way through here you can see the approach center line does actually go straight through through the center of the circle so this is, you know, at your ideal location where everything is uh, squared up 90 degree type of an intersection, the roundabout can be placed right in the center. But that there is this offset to the left design. So as a vehicle approaches, they are directed to the left of, of the center line, or left of the center of this central island. And there's that 200 foot splitter island that we'd mentioned. So we're gonna have that in place on these high speed approaches. And that's that's kind of a minimum. You could go longer if you wanted to, but 200 is a, a decent place to start. There is a 15 foot minimum clearance face to face that we're gonna to wanna to provide through there. So that's really say a 12 foot lane with uh, one and a half foot gutters on both sides gives us that 15 feet face to face. The, the exhibit here also shows the, the curvatures and the tangents that we're going to be looking for um, to be provided in our design. So we have this curve to the right, tangent, curve to the left, tangent, and then curve to the right entering into the roundabout. Minimum radius that we're going to be looking at is based on a threshold of driver comfort that is sufficient to provide a margin of safety against skidding and vehicle rollover. And that's the equation there. You're going to have your design speed, your radius of curvature, super elevation, and then that side friction, which all comes into this, this minimum radius. Here is the side friction factors that can be uh, looked up and utilized. And Based on, on those factors, you can look at a minimum radius here. So if we've got uh, 30 miles, or I should say 60 miles per hour, you can see that when you have super uh, elevation against you, you need uh, 2,400. When you have the super with you at 2%, you can use a, a 1,715. Let's take a closer look at each uh, section of our approach design for these high speed approaches. We'll start off with our high speed roadway uh, segment. We're gonna have 2% sloping away, a normal crown sort of section here. We've got our curve to the right, and that is our AR1. And the AR1, and you can look in the approach roadway design speed, pick that out, and then what the minimum radius would be there, or recommended radius actually would be for there 
And following that is our tangent, and that is 100 foot minimum. Into the middle section of the transitional roadway section, we have that again 2%. We're not going to be looking to do a super elevation here if we can. And again, these radiuses are are sized appropriately based on on a 2% to the outside. Got that tangent, that 100 foot minimum tangent approaching here. Now we've got this curve to the left, which is our AR2. And again, you can see the values there for, for this curve, depending on your design speed. And then we've got our tangent 2 that's going to be um, approaching the low speed section here. So here's the low speed roadway section. There's that tangent 2. We want that to be 100, or I should say 50 feet minimum. And then you've got your curves into the roundabout. And those, that R3 is normally in the 75 to 100, sometimes larger, um, but that all depends on the size of the circle and what design vehicle you're trying to accommodate. Let's take a look at the nose uh, or the start of the, the splitter island there. We'll zoom in on this detail A here where we have our, our standard 1.5 foot gutter on both sides. We've got a radius to the face of curb that is three feet minimum. And then we've got a three foot offset from, for that nose to the edge of the travel lane. So when you add all of that up, that equals 10.5 feet. So at the beginning of your splitter island, you're going to need uh, 10.5 feet in order to fit in um, the nose and the offset. And the reason that we need to have a three foot uh, radius there minimum is to fit in our keep right sign. And we want to make sure that that has uh, some clearance two feet from, from that face of of curb and gutter. And there's a picture of, of that type of a design with the sign placed there and the curb being offset and your normal normal gutter. So everything that we've just covered, we want to be clear that these are just guidelines and that is up the to the designer to develop the appropriate geometrics for that specific intersection location. You should be able to use a lot of these uh, guidelines, but there may be locations where you're not going to be able to follow that. So you don't necessarily have to, as long as you can get vehicles to slow down, you can have your appropriate fastest path and that you're able to accommodate the design vehicle. So when we take a look at the high speed approaches, I just wanted to walk through a couple different examples. This is where we're going to have the splitter island or placed to the right of the center line. So you can see how this nose here, uh, everything is to the to the right. You may have a location where it's more centered. So the approach roadway is centered and then there may also be locations where, depending on where the circle is placed, you may have that splitter island to the left of the center line. Taking a look at examples here. Here's one where the splitter island is all to the right. And you can see this one's really close to the, the guidelines or the exhibit that was shown in the, in the FDM. But here's an example where the roundabout had to be pushed down, down a little bit. So on this particular approach, you know, you're not pushing somebody to the right because you gotta actually get them down to the, to the left. So there is, this this nose right in here is to the to the left of the of that center line, and on on this approach again is a little bit different here with some curvature to the right already coming into it. So you know just the point of these graph or these pictures is just to show the different alternatives, and that you may not be able to use those guidelines at every location. And one more example here this this roundabout is placed at a location of old intersection was at a, a pretty significant skew. So you try and take the legs and square them up the best that you can. And then you can see each approach is, is a little bit different at this location. Again, just pointing out uh, different 
alternatives or different ways of doing it. You're not going to necessarily be able to follow the guidelines perfectly that were shown in, in the, the DOT's example there, but they're a great place to start. But again, each location may require a little different, different type of design with that. And that concludes Module 5, Single Lane Design.